I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome to the hub here in Kiln Hill in Kilkenny. So I'm down here for the 2018 Kilkenny Motor Show. So there's dozens of cars inside the hub here, all shining and looking fantastic. And uh, yeah, we'll be checking out them in a while, but there's a bunch of cars outside here. We have the Kilkenny Vehicle Centre and they have a nice display. So we'll have a look at these first, then we'll make our way inside. And then we need to come back outside here because there's more to show you as well. So it's all happening here in the hub in Kiln Hill. Let's go. Okay, why not start off today's video with this LDV V80 tipper van. So this has a gross capacity of three and a half ton. Now I've not featured an LDV van on the channel before, so why not show it to you today? Uh, very handy for tipping your loads. And it features the 2.5 liter diesel engine with 134 horsepower. But uh, that is just a quick look inside. All the vehicles are locked up, so I'm afraid I can't show you inside any of them, but yeah, that's how it looks. The LDV V80. So they have more commercial vehicles here. We will go down through them. We have the Citroen Relay there, the big capacity van. This would be going into competition with the likes of the Ford Transit and the Volkswagen Crafter and it's marked up there for 22,000 euro. Then if you don't need all that space, you can go for a smaller relay. And this one marked up for 18,690 euro for your smaller Citroen relay. Then we have the Citroen Dispatch. So uh, yeah, these are based on the Toyota Pro Ace. They share the same bodywork, and that one coming in at 17,000 euro. And if you don't need that much space, you can go for a smaller Citroen Berlingo. Now this one has a very good price on it, marked up there for 11,400 euro, but it is pre-registered, 1A2 registration on the Citroen Berlingo. Then we have the Honda HRV, your small little uh, multi-purpose vehicle, uh, quite nicely styled. But I just want to show you the two Honda Civics here, because on the left we have the hatchback, and on the right we have the new saloon. So we'll have a quick look at the differences between both cars. Now we have the one liter three cylinder petrol engine in the hatchback there, and we have the 1.6 ID Tech diesel in the saloon. So you'll see the way the styling differs at the front. Uh, the bumpers are both different. Now I'm just gonna give you a look at the rear styling just to show you the differences because um, the hatchback there, I was never really a fan of the bumpers at the back, those big black sections, not really uh, to my taste, but each to their own. And this is the saloon. This is the new saloon, so far better styling at the back. Far tidier bumper design, and uh, I like the crease design on the boot lid as well. But yeah, here are uh, the differences between both. But if I was buying one, I'd definitely be looking for the saloon. And I'd probably get that 1.6 ID Tech diesel engine as well, because you'd have more torque than the uh, petrol version there and yeah I reckon the diesel would be probably quicker on the road too and then we have the Isuzu pickup there the 4x4 uh, coming in there at 31,000 euro and then we have the new CRV so yeah we'll have a quick look around this uh, quite nicely styled very tidy piece of design from Honda on the new CRV and I'm just going to give you a quick look at the rear um, yeah, they've done a nice job on these now. Uh, and as I said, they're all locked up. I can't get into any. But anyway, we'll get into the showroom here and we'll show you plenty more cars inside. Okay, I'm gonna have to work quick in between all the copyright music being played. So here we have the Nissan Leaf. So the Leaf has really come on leaps and bounds over the years. Uh, I'm just gonna hop inside here and just give you a quick look at the interior. So you have two models coming up for the Nissan LEAF. This is the 40 kilowatt. So your battery is a 40 kilowatt unit. So you can drive up to realistically 170 miles um, in the 40 kilowatt Nissan LEAF. But uh, let's just have a quick look at the, <laughs> the little uh, gear selector, you could call it. But uh, yeah, quite nice in the LEAF. I'll just give you a quick look at the interior space for the rear so uh yeah it's pretty good and let me just give you a quick look at the boot 
So it's a sizable enough boot. Uh, I wouldn't say it's as big as my Honda Civic, but it's still not too bad for an electric car. And obviously you can fold down the seats as well for extra space. Now next year, uh, I've been told around April time, there is a 60 kilowatt Nissan Leaf coming to the market. And that will have a range of up to 240 miles for the Nissan Leaf. But uh, yeah, it's quite a nice car. They've done a nice piece of work on it. And let's just have a look. Now you do have two charge points there underneath that cover at the front. So uh, yeah, quite a nice piece of design, the Nissan Leaf. And we have the Nissan X-Trail there, parked beside the Opel Astra. And we have the Mokka X. So yeah, that's just some of the cars here at Barlow Opel and also your Nissan dealer. Very nice. Okay, we're going to quickly walk through some of what they have outside on display here at the hub. So we have uh, the very nice looking Kia Sportage. This features the GT line spec. So a uh, nice blue metallic paint and we have the 19 inch alloy wheels and beside it the Kia Sorento. Now, of course, these both come with the seven year Kia warranty, which is always very nice to have that uh, for peace of mind. And beside it, we have the Volkswagen Caddy van. So uh, yeah, I checked inside. It doesn't seem to have any air conditioning or no leather features. This is just your basic price there, 15,146 euro. And of course we have the ever popular Volkswagen Transporter van. Always a nice van to drive. I drove one of these years and years ago. But uh, yeah, I like the Volkswagen Transporters and it's marked up there for 23,975 euro. And that's available from lahartvolkswagen.ie. And moving down, we have another Volkswagen Transporter. So these are on the 3,000 euro scrappage scheme. So you can get 3,000 euro back if you scrap your old van. And also, I forgot to say, on the Caddy van, you get a 2,000 euro scrappage scheme on your old vans. So yeah, uh, let's just move down. We have the Volkswagen Crafter here. So it's marked up there for 28,415 euro. This is the short van. You can get a longer van than this in the Volkswagen Crafter range. But uh, yeah, that is your two Volkswagen Crafters. If you want more space than the Transporter, uh, just go for one of these. Uh, also from Lahart Motors. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna move over here. There are a couple of cars here. We have the Ford Focus. And to the left, we have the Ford Ranger four-wheel drive from Michael Ling Ford. So yeah, this features the 2.2 liter uh, TDCI diesel engine. So uh, yeah, quite rugged looking, the Ford Ranger. Plenty of chrome there on the front of the Ranger. So yeah, it'd be nice to take one of these off-road, see what they're capable of. But yeah, it has a starting price there of 30,882 euro for your four-wheel drive Ranger. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the uh, seats in the back as well. So yeah, very handy to have one of these, wouldn't it? Just to throw all your bits and pieces in the back. And it's all protected as well. It has this plastic covering in the back. But uh, that is the Ranger. So we have 157 brake horsepower from the 2.2 liter diesel engine. So there should be good enough torque in that engine. And we have the Ford Focus with its one liter EcoBoost engine, developing 123 horsepower for the Ford Focus. So yeah, I do like the, al the alloy wheels on that. Nice color on them. Uh, the color itself, not one I'd go for, but um, yeah, it looks pretty okay in here in the ST line. I'm just gonna check what they start from. There you have it. 23,795 euro starting price for your one liter EcoBoost in the Ford Focus. Okay, I'm gonna make my way back into the hub. Plenty more to show you.
Okay, so I'm just outside here in the car park and I'm out here to check out the full electric Hyundai Kona. So yeah, this is <laughs> this will be very interesting, guys. Not only that, I have the keys to it and I'll be taking it out on a test drive. So yeah, the guys in Michael Ling Motors have been very kind and uh, I'll be joined by one of the salesmen. He'll be hopping into the passenger seat and giving me the whole lowdown on this car. You'll be interested in this, guys. Uh, great range from the Hyundai Kona, all electric. Okay, so let's check out the exterior styling first of the all electric Kona. So you'll see the way it differs from the front end to the standard Kona. Uh, of course, we have no grill there at the front because you don't need it with the full electric power plant. And I'm just going to open up here and just give you a look at the uh, two charge ports. So there, yeah, we have two charging sockets there. So we have AC, DC, and we have CCS, your combined charge cycle on the Kona. Yeah, so these are coming in at a price of around 37,000. 850 euro so you'll see the wheels there uh, specially designed to cut down on drag and we have nice protection all around the arch there as well so yeah they will be slightly higher up off the ground than your normal saloon car or hatchback but uh, i'm just going to give you a quick look at the rear leg space before we hop inside now i have the driving position in my position i'm six foot two and that is your space in behind the seats so it's nicely styled on the inside very bright interior and let's just quickly look at the boot and give you a look at the boot space i can open up that with the remote as well so let's get that open and yeah you'll see we have space there underneath so you can store all your items there and you can also put a spare wheel underneath there as well if you want your space saver spare wheel you can put one into the Kona electric. So I'm just gonna hop inside uh, quite, um, yeah, it is very nicely styled in the inside, isn't it? Nice bright interior and the headlining too. So yeah, let's hop inside and give it a quick look around. I'm just gonna close the door. Okay, so that is your display and all the nice, bright finish to the buttons there so it's quite simple enough we just have park neutral reverse and drive and we have a charging port there with your auxiliary input and storage and here we have the uh, screen let me just go down through some of the functions on the screen so i can uh, oh yeah it has heated seats as well uh, fr front seats are heated and we have our let me just click on this we have sport we have eco and we have comfort so three different driving modes there on your screen and what else do we have oh yeah the parking distance control and your auto hold function for holding the brakes and heated steering wheel as well so uh yeah very handy to have that your electric handbrake it's already started up let me turn on the ignition again and give you a start up there let you see what it looks like starting up a little bit of a music chime there <laughs> but yeah that's uh now you'll see there at the moment we have 389 kilometers of range left but this car will um they reckon around 250 miles but i'll get a definite on that when we have the salesman in beside us but we have all our steering wheel functions there as well and all your phone functions on this side but yeah that is the a quick look through the hyona kona because we need to hit the road before it gets too dark and all your electric windows, of course. Okay, let's hit the road and see what it's like. Okay, guys, I'm joined by Neil Ling here. Neil, thank you very much for no Thanks very much taking for me out no for, for the spin. So this, Neil, is the second electric car I've ever driven. <laughs> right, and hopefully I've, the best. Yeah, I, I've, I've been in a Tesla, I've been in a couple of Teslas, but only in the passenger seat, and I've driven the, uh, the uh, BMW i3. Deadly. So, uh, yeah. This is uh well, hopefully you're in for a treat now. It's 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 yeah. a, it's the it's the hottest property at the minute. Uh, so as you see, we're ready to rock and roll. That's uh, it. It's not there's no gear stick. As you see, the no gear stick. Yeah, at all. The, it's push button start. Yeah, push button everything. So we want to go into drive. You're currently in park. So <laughs> right. I need to knock this off. You you're okay. Press the. Oh yeah, yeah 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 yeah. That would be handy, Aaron. It will go better in drive. <laughs> I promise you that. I promise you that. I was pressing P. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're off. Ready uh, to roll. 
Uh, Total you can, silence. Just as, you, as we're driving along, you see over your right hand knee, there's a yeah. vest button, and you can kind of oh, hear yeah. a slight humming. If we turn off the vest button, there's zero sound. Oh, right. So this little vest button, it, button it, it emits a sound so it, people can hear the car. It, it's, it's, a, it's a manufactured sound so pedestrians can see the car as they uh, hear the car as they walk down. Because if you can imagine the scenario, if you're yeah. driving down a busy pedestrian street or busy high street uh, and you're, you're in your car and there's zero sound, with people's heads buried in their phones so much now, <laughs> uh, they, they, they rely on their hearing of the vehicles coming up the road rather than just visually seeing it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's what the vest button is for. Nice and touch. Yeah. So Neil, this has a 62, or is it 64, 64 kilowatt? kilowatt? 64 kilowatt. 64 kilowatt. kilowatt the right. recharge system. Did I actually just remind me when we when we on the way back? I want to just change the drive mode. We have a couple of different drive modes in this. Yeah. We are in the eco drive mode, which has a recuperation one, which basically means as we drive the car, uh, right. the car will automatically regenerate some of its power into the battery. But when we come back now, you can feel a nice bit of pickup. <laughs> Look at that! And you're not in sports mode. Yeah, that is fast, Neil. Uh, uh, like everything, if you drive this uh, and use the use the power that, that's available to you, you're going to burn the wee battery. Uh, I, I battery a wee bit quicker, I beg your pardon. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, it's quite, it's very, very nippy. It, 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 it's, it's still a surreal drive with zero sound, but loads of pickup, loads of pickup. And Neil, the, um, the government grant and the VRT grant what yeah. price is the car coming Basically, in? Basically, just, just to kind of give you some fairly rounded figures, the car will retail out uh, just over 47,500 euro, call it 48 grand round figures. Um, there is a there is a 5,000 euro SEIA grant available, uh, and then there's a, a 5,000 euro uh, VRT concession as well. Uh, now, there is the, the VRT on this car is actually 5,910 euro, but uh, our distributor Hyundai uh, are carrying the can for the extra 910 euro. So in oh. a, essentially, essentially you get almost 11 grand off the price of the car. Right. Uh, which will leave the car retail. So you go buy one of these in a nice uh, metallic finished car in around 37, 37 and a half grand. Right. And I was told as well that it only comes in metallic paint. Is current, currently, yeah. currently, all we have available is metallic paint. Like the the, the, the demand on these is far exceeding the supply. Yeah. Uh, like we have a huge demand base on these. We're all limited to our stock, uh, and and to to give Hyundai great credit, uh, they've got their hands on as many as they've can, um, as many of these as they can. Yeah. I know that there is a massive wait in this in other European countries, up to two years in some of other European countries. What? Like, two years. I actually <laughs> met a Norwegian dealer. I was away with Hyundai. Uh, the week gone by, uh, and I, we, we met uh, at a global conference, and I met some dealers from Norway, and there's a two-year wait list on these cars. So we're lucky, we have some stock, we're very lucky at the minute. And Neil, is that purely down to range? Uh, do, do Hyundai have the upper hand when it comes to like Nissan or Renault? But, uh, Nissan, Nissan have really set the pace with the Nissan Leaf to, as a kind of uh, a highly attainable car. Uh, the range has improved greatly, but with a range of, of, uh, of what, 482 kilometers for your EV, it really brings far bigger, a, bit, a far bigger audience yeah. to the electric car. Um, so you'd be talking around 250 miles, around yeah, that like, figure. Yeah, 250, 300 miles, really. Like you yeah. know, it 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 just it, it brings it brings this um, into the day to day running life of, of people's everyday needs. Uh, like the the most of the, the EVs out now carry a range of maybe uh, 200 to 300 kilometers, um, but 480 kilometers, like, it's a huge increase, huge yeah. increase, and. Uh, they run a cost is down and, and what will really make this a game changer in the category it's in uh, under new regulation uh, announced this year to the government uh, there has been a price cap put the EVs qualify for zero BIK so for the company driver they, oh, they, right, don't, they yeah. don't pay BIK but it has been capped at a 50,000 euro cap so any of the bigger versions uh, like what you mentioned at the start of the drive uh, the BMWs, the Audis that, that will exceed a 50,000 euro price cap that car will the, that customer will incur a BIK charge whereas our Kona with the highest range in the, uh, in the, of battery on the road uh, and a very decent size and high spec this car will incur zero BIK for the, for the commercial driver alright ok if you want to pull in up here slightly I'm going to change your drive mode right, uh, okay. there's no one behind us but if you yeah. see there's a drive mode down here to my right hand side. Oh, we can change that. I'm yeah. going to press that. To oh, to we're sport. in sport. <laughs> so 
what we're going to do, yeah, we... I, I'm going to invite you to do what I'm inviting <laughs> no other customer to do in his history. Drop it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that is fast now. We are literally up to, what was it? 90, 90, 90 kilometers yeah. there in seconds. Seconds. Yeah. Like. Uh, and like, that's, that's something that, that isn't necessarily available on your combustion engines. Like, the fact that this is, is uh, on-demand power, yeah, you get that. You get that drive. You get that kick straight away. Yeah. Now, obviously, in sports mode, uh, you're using the the power in it. You're not going to get the full battery capacity, but it's nice to have a little bit of an option. Have a wee bit of fun with the car as well. Yeah, it's. <laughs> they've really thought of it. I have to hand it to to Hyundai. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That they've got a high kilowatt, you know, um, electric power plant in the Kona, which. I think it kind of gives them the upper hand. I know that Nissan are bringing out a 60 kilowatt next year. I've been told that, but uh, I'm still not sure it's going to have this type of range. Uh, you're gonna find they're, yeah. they're probably gonna find hard or very very difficult to compete. Like Hyundai launched their first electric vehicle in the Ionic back in 16 mm -hmm. uh, with a range of uh, over 280 kilometers, um, and now two years later they've launched this. Uh, Kona EV with 482 kilometers of range. Right. You know, like, to, to give Hyundai credit where it's due, they're really, um, they're really leading the drive. Maybe not as quickly, but when they do it, they get it right and they get it right yeah. the first time. To be fair to them, um, now we're delighted. We're delighted to have this uh, in the showroom because it's 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 opening our doors to new customers. That maybe we, we didn't see in the last few years with the with the availability of the Leaf and yeah. the lack of availability of our Ionic. I think the demand for these things is, uh, is just yeah. phenomenal. But it's amazing. Like uh, I've spoken to guys that drive electric cars, but they really do their homework, don't they? These guys, uh, when they're sh shopping for electric cars, especially people who have owned other electric cars. Um, they really do their homework. Uh, right. they, they know their beans in fairness. Yeah. Uh, I remember the first uh, EV customer came into me in the showroom. I think it was actually up in our Carlo, uh, our Carlo showroom at the time. Uh, and he came in and he, he, he started questioning me about the the, the charge, the wattage, the, the, all these <laughs> questions. And to be straight, I had to hold my hands up to him and say, "Listen, I'm going to actually <laughs> use you now and get some information off you." Uh, yeah. And he did. He gave me a bit of time and he educated me, but. The, 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 the guys and girls buying these cars, buying these electric vehicles now, they have their homework done. They have the, they, 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 there is a little community there. They understand the, the cost. Uh, while it might be a, a more expensive uh, commodity at the start, um, they see the, the, the long-term benefit of like the, 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 the cheaper run of costs, you know, the, the, the free charge, currently free charge, the free electricity and public charge points. Um, they see the benefit of it straight away. But, and uh, Neil, does the steering weight up with sport mode? Because um, yeah, it does. It stiffens up. Because yeah, I definitely it, noticed that. Sport, you actually have a little feature on there called lane keeping assistance. Oh uh, yeah, it's the a little button, assist, little yeah. button to your right hand side. So if you see yourself deviating to one side of the road over the other, yeah. you may feel the steering wheel pull you pull back against <laughs> you slightly. Let me just switch that on. Yeah. yeah. So that's gone there. off now. So you can actually. Oh, sorry, sorry. Right. Okay. Now, now it's on. <laughs> right. So if you feel if you start going out, you might feel a car fighting against you to pull you back. And if you yeah. go towards the white line, uh, you'll kind of feel the car maybe pulling back against mm -hmm. you slightly to let you know that you know you're, you're not in the centre of the road. It's not yeah. the correct driving position, uh, and it's uh, it's potentially unsafe. And do we have uh, adaptive cruise control? Adaptive cruise control, wow. okay. speed limiter. You see, like yeah. there, there's huge functions on the car. Yeah. Not only did they have put huge technology, time, and research into uh, the engine and and. Uh, and uh, the, the function of the engine in the car itself, but they're putting a lot of spec inside. Now, yeah. I know the purists that, that, that look at the EVs, they will see maybe our, 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 some of our neighboring countries have maybe a bigger screen and a, and a few other small bits and pieces, yeah. but to be straight, uh, to get this in the spec it's in, uh, we're delighted, because if we're to add on all these extra bits and bobs that maybe other countries have, uh, it's gonna make the car more expensive. But Neil, uh, the charging as well, how long would it take to charge on a fast charge set? A fast yeah. charge for, for 75% uh, battery, yeah, it'll, it'll cost you, it'll co uh, sorry, it'll take you, not mm. cost you, mm. it'll take you about 45 minutes right. to get it on a fast charge unit to get a 75% battery. To charge at home, to charge at home, uh, if you get your, char your home charge unit from, from empty, 
Mm. They'll take probably between seven, you know, around seven hours uh, with Covia, and they, you can do that at night rate. The, the technology is in the car as well. Uh, you can do it on a night rate charge, which will cost you far less as well. Uh, cost you far less to, to charge your car rather than on a, on a daily on a daily rate. Yeah. But uh, technology there, the, in fairness, like I said, the manufacturers have made it uh, trying to make it as cheap as possible for people to run their cars mm. uh, and and allowing you to to set the time to charge the charging time mm. uh, through your car. And and there's also a charge coming in. Is there for like uh, you know people being charged charging up at? Various petrol stations. Yeah, there, there's talks of that. Yeah. Like, currently, currently it's free, but they're 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 probably or not probably they will. Mm. Surely they, they will once more cars come available. Like they can't fund the infrastructure that's needed to make the EVs right mm. if they don't charge. Yeah, and, you know, just go and have to charge come into place. Like, to to make the electric vehicles work properly, we need infrastructure. We need charge points uh, mm. freely uh, and more more available. Like currently, if you pull into a filling station and there's a guy in front of you charging your car, you're caught for 45 minutes. That's it. You know, that's and that's it. a minimum. That's a yeah. minimum. Once yeah. that driver comes back and takes their car yeah. away. But um, I think that the charge will have to come. Uh, mm. It's not something we like. We don't uh, invite charges upon us. But mm. to get the infrastructure in place that's needed to make this electric uh, car system work, we need more charge points in far more locations. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. And and once it becomes as convenient as that, it's it's very good. I was just away last week with actually Hyundai, and I uh, they have they have a car in production at the minute or, or in testing at the minute where there's a wireless charging coming on it, and they can oh, wirelessly yeah. emit uh, uh, power to. If you had a caravan, if you had a mobile home, all right. but technology is improving all the time. But mm. currently, we need charge points in more areas to make it work. Yeah. And for that, we need funding. Well, there you have it, guys. And there I will leave it. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you very Thanks much again. again. Thanks very much for your time. Neil. Okay, guys, that was the all-electric Hyundai Kona. I really enjoyed that drive. And it's still on. <laughs> it's Obviously, you, you can't hear know. anything. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to park it up and we will just have another quick look inside. Okay, so we're back in the hub here and of course I couldn't video much today with all the copyright music being played. But that is a very nice orange Hyundai Kona going out there. That features the one liter three cylinder petrol engine. But yeah, they're all tidying up here. So Michael Ling had a bunch of cars parked in here, Ford and Hyundai's, but I really enjoyed my day today. Um, as I said, I couldn't really video much. That music, it's the bane of my life, guys, but you never know when you're going to events, what, what's ahead of you when it comes to copyright music. But yeah, they're all tidying up here and it's time for me to go away. So I'll chat to you all again next weekend for another video, guys. So until, until then, take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers! Okay, guys, we're still outside Kilkenny here. And look at this bizarre creation on the side of the road. The big, massive giraffe and this huge car. There's my car and there's this thing. Huge! Uh, you got to admire the creativity.